Let the church say, when it is good to be in the house of prayer. Yeah. One more time. Amen. You know, we've been away from home so long, we have to uh, look around, look at our brothers and our sisters, who we are so glad to see. We miss you all. But one thing, we was absent from the house of prayer, but we were not absent from your love. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. I'll be helping the Father. Lord, it's once more and again that we have assembled ourselves at your house of prayer. We have been absent from one another for more than a year. By your mercy and your grace, you have allowed us to assemble ourselves together one more time. We pray that you will look down on each of us. We pray that you will bless each one of us according to our needs and according to your tender love and mercy. We pray that you will strengthen us spiritually, mentally, as well as physically. And we pray that you will continue to be a lamp unto our feet oh, yeah. and a light unto our pathway, yeah, yeah. leading us from one good degree to another. Yeah. And Lord, there are so many of our brothers and sisters. If you were to look around, you would find that their seats are empty because you have called them all to glory. And we pray that you will prepare us so when it's time for you to call us and when it's time for us to answer your call, we pray that we will be ready to go back with you when you come for us. We pray for all those who are in prison behind prison walls and those who are prison bound, those who are in hospitals, those who are sick at home. We pray that you will bless them in a mighty way. Strengthen them where they are weak, Lord, and build them up where they have been torn down. And we'll be so very careful to give you all of the praise and all of the glory because you and only you are worthy to be praised. In all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Those of you who have your Bible, come and go with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I will teaching and our preaching will be coming from verses 6, 10 through 17. But our primary scripture today that we want to read into your hearing is Ephesians 6 and 12. 6 and 12. And they read as thus. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. 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 We want to talk briefly and properly on this thought. Do you know the adversary? All right. Do you know the adversary? 
You say you love Jesus. If you love Jesus, you got to know his adversary. You cannot say that you love Jesus and don't know who the adversary is. That's a positive and negative in this world. You have a positive pole and you have a negative pole. And if you observe there are positive people in this world and there are negative people in this world. The scripture says in Luke 19.10 that Jesus came to this world to seek to save those who are lost. That's his mission. The Bible also tells us about the adversary. The adversary comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Everything that is good, he wants to destroy. The word of God has told us all we need to know about the episode. That's why right. even we go back as far as the third chapter of Genesis, that's when God first informed us about I will have to say. He said in Genesis 3 and 1 that he is a cunning individual. He don't mean you no good. He want to win you over to get the same sentence that he has already received. And that is a burning hell. And he is so smooth with what he does. He goes after us by the lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh and the pride See, Satan got the pig head in the garden. When he out the move with the woman, she went for what the devil was saying, hook, line, and sink. But he tried it again with Jesus. In the fourth chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 11, he tried the loss of that. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. The loss of that. The loss of the flesh. He told our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He went to a very high place and show them all of the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. Said, if you will bow down and worship me, mm -hmm. I give you all of this. Mm -hmm. After all, it is mine to give. Mm -hmm. And it was his to give mm -hmm. for a season. You have to be very careful about how you deal with Satan. Because if Satan is Jesus' adversary, Satan is my adversary and your adversary as well. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how good it looks or how proud, or how big it makes you. Mm. 
Satan means you no good. The word teaches us to be vigilant when it comes to the evil one. His word tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He won't tear you apart. I don't say how good his talk sign to you. Satan don't care nothing about you. You are nothing more than another name on the tongue. He don't mean you no good. He tells us that he only come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Everything that is good. And Jesus turned around and tell us, I come that you might have life. And that you might have life more abundantly. Every good and perfect gift, Jesus wants you to have. He don't try to withhold it from you. He want to give it to you. Ask. In my name. And my Father in heaven will give it to you. He said, be vigilant. I'm time looking all around. You better look even in the pulpit when you go into the house. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging wool. They look good. They sound good. They smell good. They are well groomed. And that's what one of the songwriters wrote because he had observed us and worship. He said, You say that you hate your white teacher because you love. Your black preacher. It ain't about the preacher. The preacher is nothing more than the instrument. A voice for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Corinthians tells us for such a false prophet, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostle Christ. And no marvel, for Christ himself, for excuse me, Salem himself is transformed into an angel of light. Salem was an archangel. Salem. You couldn't get no closer to God than Satan was. Satan was the angel of light. The angel of music. See, when Satan spoke, his voice sounded like an organ with a lot of bells on it. It sounded good. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who then shall be according to their works. I'm talking about they have a great sound when they talk to you. Because, see, when Satan angels 
sign that trumpet. You don't have to worry about sitting out there saying he or she is split verbs and doing this and that. They, they, they are not getting their sentences. Their sentences are not constructed very well. See, because we want someone that is intelligent to teach us the things that we need to know. But the scripture said there will come a time when you will hire intelligent people to tickle your ears. You want someone to tell you that you are on your way to heaven in a house when you are standing at the doorway of hell. Matthew tell us, for thou shalt arise false crises and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it was possible they would deceive the very elect. Yeah. What do you know about the adversary? Jesus encourages us. He said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Now listen to what he said, and learn of me. He's talking about learn of Jesus. He said, my way is easy, and the load is light, and I will add joy to your soul. You need to know Jesus. You need to know as much as you can about Jesus. And you won't have to worry about the evil. Because if you're not very careful, Jesus has already told us that you're going to find yourself in error because you do not know the scriptures and you do not know the power of God. Is that anything too hard for God to do? James said we have not because we ask not. You got to know that Jesus is who he said he is. The son of God. Jesus said unto his disciples if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Are you following Jesus? Do you know where you are headed? Are you on your way to the kingdom land? Yeah. Or are you on your way to a fiery, burning hell? And I don't care if you come to church every time that the door of the church is open. If you do not know Jesus, for the free pardon of your sin, you are worshiping in vain. Because 
the book of James, thou believest that thou is a God. You believe that one God, I do his way. And that's a good thing to believe that God is the only God there is. The devil also believed. Yeah. But where the devil got his hand on upon you. The, the devil not only believed, but the devil trembled at the name of Jesus. Yeah. See, because they know that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. We must be well on. And if you are not well on, Satan is going to get to you. The scriptures don't even give him a tear hole. Because if you leave a place where Satan can rip you apart, Satan is going to rip you apart. He tell us to put on the whole armor of God. Get and exercise all the Christian grace. All the grace. Get all the grace that you can get hold of. And hold on to it. To hold on that no part be naked and exposed to the enemy. There are six pieces of armor. It's not no whole bunch of armor, but God just fixed us and wear six pieces of armor. And you got to wear the armor that God has given us to wear. You remember when David got ready to go out and fight that old Philistine, Jack, Goliath? So I tell him, put them on. Yeah. I lift skirt. I put on all this heavy arm yeah. and go out and fight a jack. Yeah. But David said, I can't wear this because I have not been proved in it. You know the narrative. David reached down and got five smooth stones and took his slain. And went out to meet the giant. We have no arm of our own that will be arm of proof in a trying time. You ain't got nothing to go up against the enemy except what God has given us. We have no arm of our own. Remember that. We have no armor of our own. Nothing will stand us in stead but the armor of God. This armor is prepared for us, but we must put it on. One thing about the military. When you put on combat gear, if the gas mask was uncomfortable, so be it. You gonna wear that gas mask. And you better not be caught without it on. The steel pot, you gonna put that on your head. I don't care how much you have a headache because it's for your safety. It's for your Good. Uh -huh. Amen. The Christian should be completely armed that he may be able to stand against the wise yeah. of the devil. Yeah. That he may be able to hold out mm. and to overcome. Uh -huh. If you're equipped, you are protected. 
The only thing you have to worry about is pressing towards that high calling. I didn't say turn and run. Because, first of all, God didn't give us no armor for our back. Simply because God don't want no cowards in his own. We got to press towards the high call. What is our danger? And what need we have to put on this armor, this whole armor anyway? Why we got to put it on? One thing that used to cross my mind until I came to know the Lord. And I was in the U.S. Army then. I said, you let them put on all this armor that they got. Helmet, mask on your face. I'm talking about shoulder strap, canteen, with all your utensils on that belt. I was saying, you let them get fully dressed and let the enemy start coming. How could I run in one of them? Because if I'm free, I can run. They ain't got, but I don't have nothing to protect me. Like I said, God don't want no cowards in his heart. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Like verse 12 tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And you remember when Jesus and his disciples walked along the shores of Philippi, Caesarea Philippi. He asked, who do men say I am? Yeah, all right. All right. One said, they say you are John the Baptist. Yeah, right. Another one said, you are Elijah. Yeah, right. And still another one said, you are Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. Yeah, right. But in his own way, Jesus was saying, that's not what I asked you. Okay. I did not ask you what they said, who they said I am. But I asked, who do you say? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, yeah. the Son of God. Yeah. You remember what Jesus told him? Yeah. Simon, uh -huh. or Jonah. Yeah. He said, Flesh and blood did not tell you that. Because this is what they are saying in Ephesians 6 that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood can stand behind this sacred book there and tell you anything that you want to hear. But a man standing behind this sacred book there that has on the full armor of God he going to only tell you what God instructed yeah. right. to tell you. Yeah. Because, see, we are not our own. Yeah. We've been born with a pride. Yeah. I can't do what I want to do. Yeah. I can't say what I want to say. Yeah. I got to do what does said the Lord. No shortcuts. The combat is not against ordinary human enemies. Not barely against men compounded of flesh and blood. It's not about 
They want it to be about them. Mm. Like Jesus told them why he was on the planet Earth. He said, they will have their rewards right down here on Earth. Yeah. They want praise and you give them praise, they have that just reward down here on earth. We have to do with an enemy who entices and is very skilled at deception. He's good at what he does. And one thing about the adversary on they are so well disciplined. You never, in reading God's holy word, you never hear where one of Satan's soldiers abandoned his ranks. You never read in God's word where any of Satan's soldier ask for amnesty. You never read that in God's holy word. Because they are loyal to Satan. And they will they are willing to die with Satan. Because in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. When he fell to the earth, he had a thousand ways of beguiling unstable soul. He looked for those who are weak in God's word. Those who do not know what thus says the Lord. And if you don't know what God's word is telling us, you can be led astray by anyone. Don't you know that this book is referred to as the sword of the spirit. If you are well exercised in the sword, you will go up any of the adversary. Because you have been trained in the word of God. He is a powerful enemy. Principalities and powers and rulers. They are numerous, they are vicious, and rule in those heathen nations which are yet in darkness. Do you listen at the news? Do you see what those heathen nations are doing on the planet Earth today? And you can see these United States of America, they are beginning to lose their armor because People who said that they loved us not openly profess that we hate you. The ones who used to come along beside us is turning now toward Russia and China. 
and other nations that don't care a who about our God. We have need of faith in our Christian word because we have spiritual strength to bring it. What is our duty in a way? What do God require of us? First of all, he requires to put on the whole armor of God. And then to stand up and run and withstand our enemies. You got to stand for the truth. If nobody else stand for the truth, you have got to stand for God's word, even if you have to stand all by yourself. We must withstand. We must not yield to the devil's charm and assault, but oppose them. Satan will charm you and be stabbing you in the back at the same time. And you, we have three words that we just automatically use, even if it's the first time that you ever met someone. I love you. <laughs> you remember when you was a kid? You went out on the very first date. You don't know him from Tom or Jerry. And before the night is over with, the first thing you say, I love you. <laughs> but you don't even know him, child. The first time you ever seen him, he's charmed you. And you say you love him. If, he's, if Satan stand up against us, we will stand up against him. We got to stand up a brand. Yeah, yeah. To stand against Satan is to labor hard against sin. Yeah. We got to know sin when we see it. Yeah. Yeah. We got to know how to sin. Nope. Yeah. And we got to know how sin smells. Yeah. We got to know. Yeah. We got to be an expert in recognizing mm -hmm. sin. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the day of temptation or any sort of affliction. Days of temptation is coming up on you. I don't care how old you are. The days of temptation is not over with. You are still susceptible to peer pressure. Uh -huh. Amen. Like Paul said to Peter, that talk you are talking, you have even convinced Barnabas to turn away from the world. You got to stand. For God. Amen. And God only, you got to stand. Amen. We must stand on the ground. And having done all to stand, resist him. And he will flee. If we give back, he will get ground. Every step you step backward, Satan is gaining. That you should have stood still. You should have been able to see the salvation of the Lord. 
I will present vengeance is to withstand the assaults of the devil and to stand it out. And then our warfare will be accomplished and we shall be finally victorious. What a day when you can be declared victorious. When you are in a position to say that you are victorious, that means that you have been sealed by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. There is no doubt about who you belong to. Because you are now graduating from basic training. You are now full Pledge soldier in the army of the Lord. We must stand on. Here is a Christian in complete armor. And the armor is divine. Armor, armor of love. You got to put on the belt of truth. You got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet got to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. You got to take up the shield of faith. Because although you are, have passed the solemn test, Satan still going to be firing those fiery darts at you. And you need the shield of faith to repair those dots that Satan is going to be firing towards you. You got to put on the helmet of salvation. And most of all, you got to take up the soul of the spirit, which is the word of God. Don't let your soul get rusty. Don't put your sword in a closet and close the door. Don't put it on the back porch where it can get rusty. You got to keep the sword right by your side. You got to work out with it. Preferably on a daily basis. You need to work out with your sword every day. Yeah. When you talk with your friend on the telephone, tell me this. When you talk to your friend, are you talking about the gospel or are you gossiping? They sound alike, but they are a long way from meaning the same thing. When someone is irritated about something, you should be able to tell them to go to such and such scripture in the Bible and read what God is saying about what you are going through now. Who is a vicious fighter? Five and eight tell us to beware of your adversary, the devil. Because this guy is vicious. This guy don't have no conscience. He don't care who he offends. If he can turn father against son and son against father, he'll do it. If he can turn daughter against mother, mother against daughter, mother against daughter-in-law, he don't care. 
All he wanted to do was be victorious. As you do battle against the mighty powers in this dark world, fight in the strength of the church whose power comes from the Holy Spirit. Fight in the power of the church because we have teacher who would teach us what to do. A comforter who would comfort us when we get down trying. And would guide us when we are not sure which way we should go. The Holy Spirit, our teacher, our comforter, and our guide. Learn to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Because He, Christ, and God is the same. Three wrapped up in one. And if you are planning on going back with Jesus when He comes, you got to fall out with the wicked ways Amen. of this world. Amen. We got to stop being so selfish. What mine is mine and what yours is mine. You got to get that mindset out of your mind. You got to learn to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, strength, yeah. and all our understanding. Mm. And we got to learn to lean and to depend yeah. upon our Lord yeah. and our Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ, Amen. who said, I will never leave you yeah. nor forsake you. He said, I will be with you yeah. all the way yeah. to the end. We sing a familiar hymn of the church. If there's anyone who have not yet fully surrendered to God, today is an acceptable time of salvation. Come.